views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Hey everybody, it's time for the Bronx Buzz. This is the program where we talk to Bronx journalists, Bronx reporters, Bronx videographers sometimes, Bronx photographers, give you a little insight as to what they're thinking about when they sit down and either write or take pictures or do video, whatever it is they do. And this evening we have two great guests for you. Um, one has been here before and he's going to be wearing something that you will find pleasing. And the other is pleasing anyway because of who she is. She's never been here before, so we will welcome Darissa White from Roll the Drums, <laughs> BronxNet Television. Nice to have you with us. Thank you. Nice to be here. So um, we want to introduce you to the people who see you on TV and get a little background uh, as to who you are. She told me already you're from <laughs> Chicago. I am from so, Chicago. So um, you grew up in Chicago? Yes, I grew up in Chicago. I was born and raised in Chicago. And um, did you study journalism? Did you, like, say, oh, gee, maybe I'll do that? I mean, how did it come about? Yeah, so, I mean, I grew up in Chicago and I've always wanted to be a reporter mm -hmm. pretty much um, I, I grew up on the south side of Chicago and it's a very um, the neighborhood that I grew up in it was kind of like a poor neighborhood and I spoke with all of these people and they had these interesting stories right like everyone has a story and I just felt like you know when the news came to the neighborhood it was always about something bad it was a Boy, does, does that it ever sound <laughs> familiar, right? <laughs> right. Um, it was it was something bad, and I was just like, you know what? These these people they have interesting stories, and I think that they need to be told. So that kind of made me want to look into journalism. So I went to high school and I joined my journalism team, and I it was it was called the Harlem Times. And I started from there. So from the Harlem Times, I ended up meeting the mayor at the time, Mayor Daly. And um, I met Karen Jordan from ABC7 Chicago. And that kind of fueled my passion and my fire. So, and and uh, did, you, did you study it in school or anything like that? In college, yes. So um, when I went to school, I went to Southern Illinois University, Carbondale. And yeah, I, I got into communication studies. And so you were motivated by what was around you. What was around me, correct. And, and, then you, and so you said, I want to be on TV, I want to be a journalist, I want to do anything that tells the story. Like, what was your professional motivation? Well, it was, it was definitely just telling these untold stories, you know, and I didn't really want to do breaking news. I, I just felt like I was kind of turned off from Boy, breaking news. Boy, are you news. perfect for Bronxnet television. <laughs> So then what brought you to New York City? I mean, listen, there are all those same stories are in Chicago. You yeah. could have done that as well. Right. But, I mean, what makes the story interesting is when you really oh, the leap. the story was interesting already. <laughs> it's, it's when you really leap. And um, so after I graduated college, I was working for this small radio station. And I kind of just, mm -hmm. I was a production assistant. Okay. Um, so I was cutting audio. I would be on the radio sometimes. Um, kind of, it was just a public access station, mm -hmm. um, Southern Illinois. And I told my supervisor, I said, you know, I think I want to move to New York. Well, <laughs> and they said, no, Darissa, don't go, please. Yeah, pretty much. You know, they said, well, you know, why are you doing this? And I said, you know, I think that I, I would like to be in New York City. And I had a couple of hundred dollars saved up. Wow. And I had a car. I didn't have anywhere to live when I, wow. <laughs> I didn't have a job what, here. This is a better story than I had <laughs> even imagined. Yeah, I, I didn't have a job. And there was something about New York, even though you're in Chicago, we're not talking about Austin, Texas. Yeah. We're talking about 
You, something about New York it was, beckoned you. It was really just, I just feel like New York has this energy. I have never, I've never been here at the time, and I really wow. wanted to just, you know. And how long have you been here? I've been here three years. Three years. Mm -hmm. uh, you were telling me before, and we can give it away, that yeah. you have worked at New York One. Yes, yes. Is that like the first job you got? That or? was my first job. Well, I was waitressing for a while, and that was mm -hmm. that's an interesting, interesting story. Uh, these two producers ended up sitting at my table from CNN and uh, yeah, listen you got to be good to be lucky and that's great yeah and so they ended up saying you know what are you here for and I said I really want to become a reporter and they said what are you doing to make it happen and I was like nothing I'm not doing anything you know I don't know anyone and they ended up getting me an interview at New York One Wow. and I began at New York One wow. as a news assistant. What a, what a great, so you were at New York One and then how did you find your way at to BronxNet Television? So uh, Let me guess, yeah. because Opportunity Knocks, BronxNet has tremendous opportunities for young people. I mean, that is what the, the station stations, of course, plural, have been about since the first day we were founded. Absolutely. And so people like you do incredibly well at Broxton. I, that's, did, did I steal your thunder there? No, that's very <laughs> true. You're right, Gary. Um, I met Michael Max Nobby actually at this event that I was covering for New York One. Uh, and, you know, I told him that I didn't really want to do breaking news anymore. And, you know, he started telling me all of this stuff about BronxNet and how it's like arts and culture and it's about the community. And that's exactly why I got into wow. journalism, in the, you know, in the first place. Wow. So I a interviewed with him. And here and I am. And it makes sense. And you've been at BronxNet for how long? I've been here uh, since May, but full time since August. And uh, you you do covering news, and we're going to show one of the uh, stories that you've done. And you uh, folks already saw a little background about some of the stuff you've done. But I think it's fascinating what you do for BronxNet like every day. Talk about that. Yeah, so I work with interns every day, and I, I assume this kind of mentorship role. And I train them how to write scripts and their voice, you know, how to be on camera, how to have an on-camera presence. Um, and I just kind of just train wow, them. Isn't yeah, that wonderful? I show them how to use a camera. Great. Mm -hmm. And, and um, that's, you know, it's almost like part of the benefit mm -hmm. of being at BronxNet Television because, you know, if you're an intern and you're running the cameras, I mean, I've worked with them for obviously many years, but then they get the extra treat of, of being able to be mentored, and it's, a, it's a, I think it's great. Yeah. So, um, but you do stories too. Now, I, I'm, I'm gonna give you applause because <laughs> we, we worked together even though we were in different places <laughs> on a primary night, and you were over there doing uh, politics and, and the winners and losers and whatever else. Um, did you enjoy that? Was that was that fun? What was that about? Oh, it was it was very fun. You know, I never covered politics until I came here, so it was mm. a little bit different for me. But you know, I rolled with the punches. Right, and you did great. People might have seen a clip of that, which we just rolled. Uh, do you know the story that we're going to show? I don't. I don't even know what it is. Yes. What, what yes. It's, so it's called. Um, it was about an art show. Right? Yes. Yes, and okay. it's called Model Redux, and it was this uh, this guy named Adrian Demones. Mm -hmm. And he just created this art show, so that's what. Okay, so here we are, ladies and gentlemen. How long ago was this? Do this you know? was about, uh, I would say, two months ago. Two months ago. All right, it, it barely matters. We're going to get to see Darissa White doing among the things that she does <laughs> well. She does everything well. So here we are from uh, Bronx Night Television. I guess it aired on Open, probably. Yes, it did. So there we go. Let's uh, roll and see Darissa White. For constantly changing Bronx, an artist and curator, Adrian Demones, felt like it was crucial to preserve the Bronx's diversity and uniqueness through art. Demones co-curated Model Redux at the Bronx Art Space. We caught up with Demones to reflect on his show. What we get from this show is this kind of diversity in the arts, within the arts. Uh, you know, artists working in many different mediums, and the point of the show was also to, to blend all of these, all of this work together. And what was really important for me it was that all the artists come from very different backgrounds, and their work is very different. Adrian says he's been living in the Bronx for 10 years now and has seen the Bronx transform socially and culturally. This is why it was important for him to hold the art show in his home borough. It's really about, you know, what are Bronx spaces, culturally speaking, socially speaking, how, how do these kind of come together? Martine Fujuan, an artist and photographer who participated in the show, captured photos of industrial trade workers in the Bronx. She explained that she wanted to honor these forgotten trades and incorporated a piece of lumber, a handmade mattress, and a model cake for spectators. I was very curious. I saw these closed doors, but 
people and workers going in. And I said, what is going on? So I opened one and uh, I said, oh, I've got to photograph this, the bed. You know, for example, I can't believe that still, you know, in 2018, they're still making beds old fashioned style with wool and horse hair. So I decided I would photograph that and make it a project, thinking also that perhaps since we're all getting very gentrified here in the South Bronx, they might disappear someday. Chin Carrasco, a self-taught Bronx artist, explains why he chose to build walls for the art space and advice for people who may not have the resources to go to art school. As a centerpiece, I thought they were very critical for the space itself and also to let the other artists put their own inflections on, on the artwork itself, to collaborate and to make it something totally different from what I've created. I grew up kind of like uh, in, a, in a poor neighborhood. My parents couldn't afford college, so I never went to college. But I had have, I have the talent for art. Just the fact that I don't have a degree in art doesn't make me any less than an artist. Just keep going at it, never give up, and find a way. The last artist we spoke to explained his reasons for creating the type of art he does. It's an exercise, so it's not just about like having made an image and being like, here, look, this is an important thing to see because I want you to see this view. I think it's important because it's a record of having done it in a way. I think that people like to see that someone is paying close attention to something. I see something and, and it just has nice lines. You know, the intersection of objects, it creates a kind of compositional energy that excites my eyes. It, it's not a process in my head where I think like, I see it and I go, oh, that needs to be recorded. I just feel like, I wanna do this. The idea of Adrian's show was to highlight cultural and social economic diversity in the Bronx. Reporting for BronxNet, Darissa White. All right, the <laughs> cast of thousands are all applauding. <laughs> Darissa, great. Um, what do you like most or what have, uh, about being in the Bronx or what have you found about being in the Bronx. I always thought it's interesting when we meet journalists from the outside and work here, what are their impressions, you know, because it helps us understand better who we are. Absolutely. I think the Bronx is similar to Chicago. Everyone uh, wants to... Or, excuse me, Chicago <laughs> is similar to the Bronx. <laughs> okay. Bronx. Uh, let's call the source for what it is, you know. Um, everyone wants to help each other. And I meet so many people with interesting stories the Bronx is a hidden gem. It really, really is. You know, I've worked in Manhattan before. The Bronx. Preaching to the choir, you know, not going to get an <laughs> argument from me. Yeah, and I just think that everyone has this unique story here. I love working at BronxNet. I love telling their stories. Mm -hmm. You know. I mean, I mean, again, you know, we're we are clearly on the same page. I talk about it as being undiscovered territory. It's like everywhere I go, every neighborhood, it's different from anything else. And the one thing I will tell you for me, and maybe you feel this way, is, and I've lived here all my life, um, when I see just regular Bronx people, like walk into the deli and buy a cup of coffee or whatever it is, um, I just feel like I know them. I know who they are. I know what they're about. Now, I realize I've covered the Bronx, obviously, a lot longer than you. But there's just a sense of... We know who we are, you know, yeah. even though the rest of the world doesn't. Right. Uh, it is just such a joy to have you. When you do more stuff, you're going to come back here on the Bronx Buzz and we'll play it, we'll show it, we'll shout about it. And we're just thrilled that you're here taking care of us in the Bronx. I appreciate that, Gary. Thank Ladies you. Ladies and gentlemen, talk about a hidden gem. No longer <laughs> hidden. She's a star. It is Darissa White from Bronx Net Television. We are going to take a break and uh, switch gears totally and go to print. And we're going to answer the question, why we're pink. Maybe we are, maybe we're not. They are, the Bronx Times is pink. We'll be right back. Sure, I look cute now, but when my owner lost his job, it was rough. I was living on the street, and one night, me and this Cocker Spaniel got into it so bad, I wound up looking like an ice cream cone. I cried a little bit, but thankfully I got rescued, so I'm running, I'm jumping, all back to my old self. And I'm ready to give unconditional love, even if you put a lampshade on my head. It's not always easy being a dad. Do you have panda asthma too? Does that run in the family? This is the home of the most priceless kung fu artifacts. But when you make an effort... Dad, we're not supposed to touch anything. Oh, sorry. Go along, son. It's always worth it. Whoa, master! The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. I am but a 
get you. I'm going to get you. Call 877-4DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov to learn more. You know what, guys? There's a lot of tree branches and dry brush over here. We should probably move the bonfire over there. I'm guessing Smokey liked that idea. Hey, it's Ava, and this is Tess from Vivo's Do It Your Selfie, where we recreate the hottest looks from today's biggest music videos. After cleaning out our closet, we have a lot of clothes we don't wear anymore. Like this old t-shirt. It's not garbage, it's actually a brand new rug. And to make it, all you need to do is cut, tie, and glue. Cut the t-shirt into strips. Tie the strips into knots and glue the knots to the bath mat. I love it. Give your garbage another life. And recycle. Ain't we having fun today? It was great to talk with Darissa, and he came in here. Boy, is he excited. Guess who was at the game last night? Alex Mitchell from the Bronx Times, and he's wearing it. He's wearing the colors all day long, ladies and gentlemen. Alex Mitchell from the Bronx Times. Gee, I wonder why you're wearing that jersey today. It's got a 99 on the back. It does. It does. And as a matter of fact, uh -oh. you know, Gary, uh -oh. the last time I was on your show, I also wore a Yankees jersey. It was you just did. that time of the year. And it was rude of me not to bring you something. Oh, my God. So... The show is in session, all rise. Uh, all rise, although Gary's going to be seated if I rise, we'll be at. All right, here we, wow, is this, this is like an official Aaron Judge all rise. Listen, it must have been, the game was over by two batters into the game, right? Yeah, sixth Just inning made me feel more comfortable. Yeah, but. Uh, 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 listen, um, uh, what's his name, uh, Batances was fantastic. He was on fire, Severino was on Bronx fire. Boys, right? Yep, yep, all the... Uh, all the good ones. Yeah, listen, uh, and and I, I don't. We, I could talk baseball forever. I think that whole notion of a pitcher an inning is if you if that's what you have to do in a in a win and take all game, then you can't be winning a baseball game. That's I, I understand what you mean. And personally, I thought Robertson could have finished the job. I really did. You take out Sev. Uh, that's not what I'm talking about from the other side, from Oakland side. Like oh. They did one of these, you know, nine relief pitchers or something. Oh, yeah. That's, I mean, not, that's not how you win a big game. You need a stud out there, right? I think that's the thing. They didn't have one. Not yet. Well, Oakland, look, Oakland's a great team. They played well. What, 97, 98 yeah, wins? Listen, listen. The, the, the better, my belief is the better teams win these things. Anyway, listen, we could talk baseball. Thank yep. you very much for the gift. I will be rising uh, as much as I can. Um, but let's, uh, let's talk about this is the first thing. Uh, why, why is the Bronx Times pink uh, today, so, uh, this week? So the Bronx Times is pink because we want to support breast cancer awareness. Mm -hmm. We think that that's something you know, very important, and everybody's affected by it somehow, in some way. And not just is our paper pink, but for the whole month, our website is pink too. Uh -huh. So that's something that I think you know, a lot of people... You know, you know a lot of it is awareness. Well, you say, well, that's nice, but we're talking about getting mammograms. We're talking about taking it seriously. We're talking about eating right. I mean, doing all the things. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, and it's uh, just a tremendous um, uh, just a tremendous awareness thing and, in a way, a public service for a commercial paper to be doing it. Very good. Absolutely. And uh, speaking of eating right. Yes. Well, <laughs> 
you know what? You should be the host of this show. You could really do it. Speaking of eating right, um, you and uh, and others uh, and, and Patrick at the Bronx Times are really taking restaurants seriously. Yeah. Talk um, to me about the series that you're doing. So I'm just, I want to try everything everywhere. And I'm getting started with that. And uh, what can I say? I love pizza time. Grow yeah. this way. We're going to need two chairs. Yeah, but, the uh, next time you show up. But I've been, you know, I'm trying to have as much pizza time as possible. I, a, another place that I love that a lot of people should know about is in the South Bronx called Milk Burger. Milk Burger. This is, now, and the, and the reason we're doing this, just to be very clear, they're doing a series on different restaurants. And unfortunately for Alex, he has to go to all those restaurants and get really good food. So if Milk Burger is one of the ones you wrote about. Milk Burger is phenomenal. Why I'm, is that? Well, first of all, it's the best burger I've had, and I'm not blowing smoke. It's only grilled. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, too. They started out in El Barrio in Spanish Harlem in 2011, moving to the Bronx a couple of years ago, and this guy, Eric Mayor, had a vision. He keeps a small staff, and he has a phenomenal burger. And it's not just me who thinks that. It's Anthony Bourdain. He said, or I believe his wife once tweeted out, if Shake Shack is my significant other, then Milk Burger is my booty call. Wow. So I, I, I don't know that we really want to descend to that kind of talk here on the Bronx Buzz. But I don't know if you can see it. I'm going to show it <laughs> to the camera there. It's um, a lot better it's in like, person. But it's, it's like uh, uh, three stories high. I mean, yeah. so, so this is like a... What if you just like don't eat like a lot? You could get a, a single one. Right? You could get a single oh. one, and it's on a potato roll that when you when you grab into it, it just kind of softens up and it makes you you feel at home. It's neither it's Goldilocks. It's not too big. It's not too small. <laughs> it's the right size for a burger. I got to tell you, we've done this show now for two and a half years, and every week I talk to different journalists and we talk about all kinds of things. This is the first time we've ever talked about hamburgers. I think that's true. <laughs> um, Bravo. But then the next thing is uh, is Bistro. So you were down, I've been down at Bistro. What a funky place, right? It is cool. So Bistro down there, what is it? It's Alexander Avenue. It's right? Alexander Avenue. Yep, right, right down by the water. And really, what it is, it is an homage or whatever you want to call it to the Bronx and to hip hop. And what really gave the borough a name for something good back in the '70s. It was it was a movement that changed a lot in a good way. And that actually, that photo that you just had, that is a replica of Grandmaster Flash's turntables in the front of the really? restaurant. Right, right in the front there? That, yeah. That's before you even get in. Then you walk in after seeing this little record shop sort of display. It's like a retro record yeah. shop. Then yeah. you get this funky, cool, fresh restaurant that just goes back and back. The, Paintings done are beautiful. The photos by Joe Conzo. You know, I'm waiting for you to talk about the food. The food. I was there now. I was there for a food promotional kicks. event. The food and it's delicious. Great. Right. So uh, unfortunately, Alex has to try all that stuff out. It's it's really <sighs> a shame. And then the last one uh, was this Bronx Heat Pizza. So we've done burgers. We've done really good. I guess it's kind of like Caribbean uh, flavored food at Bistro. It's the Bronx flavor. Right. It's everybody who comes to the Bronx and what the Bronx gives them back. All combined. And uh, what about Bronx Pizza, Bronx Heat? Bronx Heat. Now this one... And where are they located? So this is actually in Champion Pizza, which has a few different locations throughout New York City, Astoria, downtown Manhattan. But there was an online competition where they were going to make any pizza that they found fit or cool. Mm -hmm. And the winning recipe was called Bronx Heat. Bronx Heat, ah. So, so wait, so it's called Bronx Heat, but they don't have a brick and mortar shop in the Bronx? They're looking into it. Well, come on. We, got, we got space, especially because if Gary gets hungry, you know, wh why was it called Bronx Heat? Now, I'm looking at this thing. It looks like it's got yep. all kinds of peppers and... Hot sauce, jalapeno peppers. Pepperoni, hot sauce, jalapenos, hot sauce, etc. And so the and now the and the it's a Bronxite who made the pizza. It's an anonymous Bronxite. They want to keep their identity oh, to themselves. Me. Well, then the, a way to stay anonymous is put it in the newspaper. 
Uh, <laughs> um, and so do you do one every week, every couple of weeks? How does it work? I, uh, whenever I can, obviously, if there's more hard-hitting news. Can I go to a restaurant, please? You want to come with me, by all means. Any, I would do that one night, for sure. I would love to do a little collaboration. I'm not going to lie about that. Oh, I would, that would be fun. That would be really do that great. And do the, I would do that, for sure. And another thing that I'm really trying to hit, I'm trying to try every slice of pizza in this borough. Oh, you're out of your mind. I think you're gonna, you're gonna be uh, eighteen hundred pounds. All right, four hundred pounds would be a start. Now wait, uh, listen. I got a couple of favorites. If you ever go to the Kingsbridge Social Club, it's the, that's to me that's the best pizza I ever had. Now that's on my list. Oh okay. I want to get there. All I'm right. uh, I love Louis and Ernie's. It's also pretty close to me. So all right, that's that's all not right. Let's bad. let's talk about uh, something serious. Not not that the food and the pizza and the burgers is not serious. True journalism, right here. Yeah, that, listen, this is the Bronx Buzz. We don't mince words. We tell you what's going on, and that's the whole idea. Um, let let's really get serious though. This whole idea of the mayor's proposal to put a jail in Mott Haven has riled people up. It appears to be moving forward. And yes. I'm going to put an asterisk. I don't know if you want to talk about this, but when they moved um, the youth offenders out of Rikers into the Horizon Juvenile Center, there was a riot and apparently 20 correction yeah, officers that's, got hurt. That's something. The whole thing, it should be done. Everybody agrees. But I feel like the process is kind of messed up. There's there's a lot of moving pieces, and I think that this is a situation where no matter what, you're not going to satisfy everyone. And I think that it's difficult, and I, I don't know how to how to solve it I, at the in moment. In other words, if you were the judge and jury, you wouldn't. Because no matter move. what, some someone's going to continue to get hurt. Something dangerous is going to continue to happen. So. But, but something we can all focus on is that a lot of people are saying that the jail in Mott Haven is the wrong place and it's not going to solve the problem. And numerous protests just this week before the public hearing yesterday at the Bronx County Courthouse, there was huge protests there. Earlier in the week, people protesting outside Diana Ayala's Bronx District well, office. Well, that, that was the curious thing is that she's the home council member and she, she supported it. Um, you know, I think sometimes if you start the right way, even if that was the conclusion they came up with, people will agree. But by doing it top down, by the mayor announcing it, and then all of a sudden it was like, what? You're putting it in my neighborhood? Yeah. People got defensive. The other thing is that Diego Beekman had a plan yes, for did. that. And you, you, you just can't ignore it when a responsible group wants to take control of their community. That's got to be part of the dialogue, and it was like they didn't even exist. So after after the city had moved forward with the plan, they had approached Arlene Parks, who's the CEO of Diego Beekman, about a collaborative project where part of the land would go to affordable housing, part would be the jail, but Parks and Beekman said, we don't want any part of a plan that's going to put a jail in our area. So Well, I wonder how it will be resolved, because... Uh, um, now, is there a city council vote still to come? There, There is. There's the, the Yearlup process right, also. Right. And another thing that they're pushing for now is all the borough community-based jails are being put in one full land review process. Right. And right now what, what the protesters gotta really talk quick. We gotta, we gotta advocating, move. they just want a separate process, take their time with it. They pretty much want to stall it out. We're going to uh, keep uh, Alex Mitchell coming in to have this dialogue as yeah. the process goes forward. Absolutely. Uh, maybe as the playoffs go forward. Yep. Good luck to your There's Yankees. plenty of stuff to uh, be in session. Right. Uh, we will. <laughs> Yankees are in session. Very much so after he hit that home run last night. Oh, uh, Alex yeah. Mitchell, always a pleasure to have you with Thank us. Say hello to my buddies at the Bronx Times. Of course. And uh, stay pink this week. Awareness, that's what it's about. And guess what? We are done for the Bronx Buzz for this evening. We'll see you next week. On Monday night on Bronx Talk, we're talking development. We've got a, um, a public and private developers who are going to be on the show to talk about what it's like to try and build good housing in the Bronx. See you then. Good night.